find out his granddad. Hello everyone. We're back this week with some more electrics. Yippee. Starting off with uh, finally wiring the fridge that's been sitting there since the summer. Um, putting the fan on and uh, connecting it all up. It's a 12 volt fridge freezer from Inlander called Amica. Okay, so that one connection into it. It was a real fiddly job with Ada's uh, sausage fingers and we'd spent about two hours trying to work out We had to mount the fan Yeah, yeah. Where, where best it would be placed for it to like Just, blow across Yeah, yeah We didn't know whether it should be sort of sucking the air away or blowing the air, in. air across So yeah. we just stuck, stuck it on it the side, side. <laughs> This tray had come off, um, we're presuming it was just a, it's a drip tray and we'll just put a bit of silicon and stick it back on, but for now, just leave it there. So there you have it, that's the box in place now. So you've got live coming in from the fridge, from the batteries, to this peg there, and the neutral coming up that peg there, and then just holding the, there with that cable holder, whatever they call them. And that's gonna, uh, then these two red wires will have conduit around them, and then they'll go back down and connect onto the back of the fridge. Uh, and then the, the um, fuse for the fridge is going to be near the where it's the take off from the battery so it's going to be close to the, the battery bank so that's that fitted and that's the same the switch now with that cover plate put over the top just, just put a little cable tie hold to hold that in place so it don't keep slipping down and then just these two connections then onto the back of the fridge. Okay. This is the uh, isolator that's going to run for the 12 volt fridge. So this is just a 15 amp breaker that's going to fit just on the front of there. So, just going to screw that onto here for now. And then because it's running across there, we're going to put a bit of conduit on this. So it's protected from the fuel line. So that's going to go 
into the That is now is going to go under the cross and onto the buzzer bar. Originally I connected all five batteries to an e each individual post on the buzz bar. But following on from uh, some advice given to us from one of the people that watch the channel, a guy called Reinhardt in Germany, he advised us not to do that and also not to have a battery connection going from the uh, left hand side there, you can see me pointing to there. That's where all the feeds come from the boat for the charging. So keep those away from the battery connections. So I've gone along with that advice. And ideally, you want to have all five batteries coming off the one post, but our buzz bar doesn't suit that. So um, he suggested that we could actually go for three coming off one post and then two coming off the other. So that's what I've done. I've rerouted those to those second and third battery uh, buzz bar posts and on the left hand side there um, you've got the output to a main fuse that goes to the uh, isolation switch and then the alternator comes in which is fused and then goes to the same post and the third connection which is the one at the top um, I'm just explaining here about the fusing of it and, and to the isolation switch but the third cable on the top there is the solar cable uh, and that's got a fuse in there as well and they all connect to that very first post so all the charging and the takeoff from the batteries come from the first post the third the fourth and fifth posts will be used as spares and that, that'll be used for this connection from the fridge and that's going to go to that fourth post on the uh, bus bar ran all this in conduit to the front of here because it's running on the front of the battery box and then they say that's going to connect into the fourth post there i'm thinking of using the fifth post for the uh, bilge pumps feeds and they will fuse from there as well there'll be three coming off there but they're smaller cables so there's room for, for me to do all that so the, yeah that's that's where we've got with the batteries and and to be fair it does seem a a lot more sensible idea to do it that way to protect the boat we've got uh, an isolation transformer not a Victron or whatever but this is from a company called um, airflow transformers which is based in the UK um, and it's a 3.6 kilovolt so a 3.6 um, 
yeah, and it's going to isolate the boat, stop all the galvanic corrosion on the boat. So uh, I'll just whip the top off now just to show you what you're looking at. And that's all the internal gubbins and it's pretty straightforward on these because you've just got your input which is from your shore power coming into here and then you take it off from this side and come into your that back side obviously goes into your boat and then all you've got all you have to do is uh, put a little link in between the black and the green on here as a link between those two and there's, you get the instructions with it anyway but yeah and all I've got to do now is I've got to decide where the cables are going to enter this box because uh, I've got to pre-drill all the holes in there put some glands in there so that the wires can be fed into the box and that's going to sit inside the cupboard yeah this is the company you get all these instructions with it um, just explaining what to do and saying it says uh, for boat AC system on there um, you link between the neutral and the earth which is the black and the and the obviously the black and the green on her so you just provide a link between the two they're rather big they are though aren't they for what we need I think we'll use our own black ones a bit too big the cable glands for that so my first job now is to decide where the cables are gonna come into here and drill the holes out for that
easier to put that on as a double ferrule as well that one Mrs. Brown is a live wire. Mm. Earth to earth, life to life, blue to bits. Yeah, red is live, neutral is black. And you put a link between neutral and earth. That link there, look. Be able to move it to get the strap on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Still be able to. I should laugh. I'm gonna start coughing. I do. Yeah, we'll probably have to just swing it this way a bit. Yeah. to the short power from the plug from outside okay and this one goes up to that RCD up there so that cable needs to come out that was we were going to do it without this guy this one when we didn't have this we were yeah. just going to wire it into there with that short tail coming out there but that's now we've got the transformer, we can put it straight into there. Yeah. Right.
box upside down. Yeah. Two seconds, aren't they? Got it wrong again, Dad. The clues are all there, aren't they? The label upside down. I actually read that. I nearly said to you. A bit weird I had to put that upside down, but I didn't think it was that that was upside down. Now it's mains are on and there's bulk charging the batteries and then you set the because it's a 16 amp supply coming in from the oh, out, power outside out. the boat so you can set that you just alter that up or down so we'll alter that to 16. How do you know it's 16? Because it's 16 amp breakers on here so oh. it's, a, it's 16 amp breakers on the board out there. Oh, right. Some are 32, some are 16 hours of 16. So that's now charging the batteries up. So you'll have to have a look at your app, see what's happening. Mm. Well then. Just to give you the latest score, Forest 1 leads nil, 76, <laughs> nine minutes, 79 minutes gone. Come on you Reds. You're supposed to be looking at the... Oh yeah, uh, oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. Victron Connect. That should pick up the smart shunt. No devices found. That's weird. You can't have the internet. But the internet needs rebooting from the electric being turned off. Smart shunt. Connecting. Voltage. Current's been put in. Power. Consumed down power as a zero, obviously, because we haven't used anything like the batteries yet. The state of charge 100%. So that voltage, 14.60, it's alright to say we haven't had these batteries on. Yeah. I've set it, I've set it to what you asked to say. Oh, I see. The parameters for the for the batteries. You set it on here, lot charge voltage. So you set them. I set them. Yeah, I went on their website and seen what the what it said. Obviously, our capacity is four hundred seventy five amps, five ninety five amp power batteries. Discharge flow fifty percent. So basically, you don't want to discharge more than fifty percent. So fit the floor for it. And there's a couple of others I need to set up, but I will do that. So our batteries now, is it showing what they are now and what they need to get up to? State of charge, 100%. Oh, so they're charged up 100% already? They're saying so, yeah. But I've got to, I'll have to go in, I'll have to, don't quote me on any of this, I've just got, just turned it on. <laughs> we'll have a look at it in a bit. Yeah, 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 I'll need to set it all up, but yeah. This is a uh, solar PV DC disconnector and it 
does exactly what it says really it'll isolate the uh, solar panels uh, from giving any power into the MPPT controller um, and we've got uh, two we've got four panels and each are done into two sets of two panels and we're wiring ours in uh, series parallel so that's why we've got sort of we've got four cables two lives two neutrals coming into the box and the same out but with joining the outs and then joining those so that they're actually paralleled into the MPPT controller So you haven't put the negative in there yet, no, that's I'll, it. I've got to call that to loads now. So get that, cut that off to length there. So now that's all then I can go to the opposite side and connect onto the bus bar. This negative bus bar, uh, you've seen these two connections before and this one as well which goes to the uh, fuse board for the fuse panel. Um, this one here is a negative from the solar, uh, the solar controller going onto this peg there. Um, I've crimped a cable, uh, crimped a lug onto this one just here, and that is the negative from the fridge. So you saw me put the positive in from the battery through that breaker in there, and that comes through into the boat and feeds this switch here. So we've now got a means of disconnecting the fridge from the supply inside the boat so if we, so we don't have to climb in the engine bay to do that we can switch it off on this one so I'm going to connect this negative now which is the negative from the fridge into this peg just here yeah so I'm just going to uh, connect that one to there so that's it we've got the uh, negative from the solar, negative from the uh, fridge connected into here. The positives run to the controller for the solar. Positive run to the isolator inside for the fridge. The fridge is already wired up. So it's a case of now coming over to this control, MPPT control we've got for the solar. We've got the positive and negatives wired into obviously positive negative connection and then the uh, cells go into there sorry the uh, cells the uh, cables from the solar panels are going to go in, into the positive and negative from there so now we're going to connect the negative and positive to the MPPT controller Into this one. Right, so at the moment all we've got is the positive and negative from the batteries wired into here. The panels are wired into there at the moment, but because this is obviously turned off at the moment, it doesn't actually get in any solar power from the panels i'm gonna just uh double check i've wired everything in right and then uh we're gonna give it a go and see what happens okay that's on now then so I'll just put the short power and should have a blue flashing light on that MPPT controller. There's a blue flashing light on it now, so yeah. should that be on bulk? Yeah. So you plug the short power in, so what should it be now? No, it just stays the same, that's, that's nothing to do with that. The inverter's off. So 
we should be able to switch the panels on there well i'm going to switch this on now and see what what happens right so it's gone to bulk on there so that blue flashing light has stopped flashing <laughs> gone to a solid blue light so that means that it's got a bulk charge going now into the batteries so if we go from that and go on to the Victron app yeah. you can now see that well it's gone into absorption now Now it looks like we're going to have a storm. Yeah. But some sun has just the sun has just popped through the cloud. Is that why? So yeah. So you can see that, that it's actually feeding power now from the panels to the batteries through the MPPT controller. So is that what it should be? Is that about? Yeah, that's good. Average, is it? I think that's good for daylight today. Yeah. 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 It probably increases the day goes on towards dinner time, lunch time. If if the what cloud time goes, is it now? No, quarter it's past quarter past nine. nine. In the yeah. So and that's in winter. Yeah, I'll show you what it looks like outside in a minute. So yeah, there you go. So we've got solar power now. So what does that stay on then? That... Now it's gone to absorption, and then once it's finished it's doing the absorption, which is like a goes bulk absorption then float so it go to float once it's finished charging bulk's like a, a big charge absorption's like a steady charge and then floats like a top up if you like like a trickle charge okay anything else you need to show me um don't say it not not that it's my birthday today but i'll, I'll show you that later So that's the sky and it looks like we're gonna have a storm it's just stopped raining but look what come out just as we put our solar on Finally seem impossible to 